Hello everyone, so in this video we will talk about how to add dynamic codes and dynamic data to your emails uh, where you can provide different information to different subscribers depending on what they did. The dynamic part of the emails is consisted into the emails, into the triggers of the flows. So if you trigger a flow, for example, like what we have in this example with place order, the dynamic content that you can use in your email is either the dynamic part from Clavio subscriber profile, or you can use from the metric that is part of the, the trigger of the flow. In this case, again, we said that would be placed order. Placed order consists a lot of information, and I will show you some of those by adding email, and then we will go into the email to start. I will use a random email, just any email that Clavio provides us, because the template is not important in this situation. We just want to test few things so how do i want to do this i want to open another tab and open the same email in that tab and you will see why so now we have this twice and the dynamic part and the dynamic content of the metric of the trigger of the flow you can see while you go to preview and here on the right side, you have all the information that the metric provides to you. So this is all dynamic content uh, related to the metric that is triggering the flow. So you see, you can see there is a lot of data and all of those things we can use in the email as dynamic content. And it will be always be different to different people, depending on what they bought in this case, because it's placed on that metric. If it is started checkout, it will have the information of what people started checkout. With. So why want them? open like this because if I don't I will constantly have to go preview copy a code come back here add the code then go back to preview this way I don't need to do that I will just go here and select the data that I need so for example we can say you used the discount code this one to buy and then we can say, we see here that they bought two products and we can say you bought this product and this product. So this is specific case. I'm not saying that you should do this because this specific thing is for one profile and it may be weird if you go to another one who has, who bought one product only and then it will show the first product and it will show end and then an empty space. I'm just giving you ideas of how, what is the best way to use the two tabs to take the event from one and then to do what you did here. Or for example, like, let me show you how we usually do product blocks. So let's say, because this is placed order, we want to show people what they bought. And in one side, we want to show them the product image. And let me see. Okay. So I copied the code here. And then we will say dynamic image. We add the code. And then for the same product, we will say we need the name, which is here. But actually, probably better if you use a different. So this one, the name code. So in the text, we can say, this is the name of the product. And then we can say, this is the price. And then we can show quantity. So now, you see how fast we took all the data without needing to go to preview and back, preview and back. And now if we click done and we go preview this, we should be able to see what that person bought. So you see, we are seeing that it doesn't look nice. This is not styled to look nice. I just wanted to give you an example, but we are saying you use the discount code and this is the discount code for the specific, this is the one watch that you bought and another watch and this is the image of the watch and this is the price this is the quantity you can say you can add price for example here quantity and that is pretty easy to do so we can just go back here 
and say for example price quantity again this is pretty simple the point is of how to find the data and it's not important to look good now you can do that while doing it properly so price quantity for for price you can also add uh, for example because it doesn't show the dollar sign you can add the dollar sign there so when you preview it and when people receive the email they will see it with the dollar sign so yeah this is one example so we are saying okay you bought this product and let's say we want to show you another product or we want to thank you for buying this product and blah 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 maybe you can say you will probably receive this product in a week or something like that why is this a good thing why is this a dynamic content so again i said previously that the previous sentence that i wrote is for specific case where i was just showing you what you can see here as data and how to easily transfer that to your dynamic content again this was not the best example because if you change for a different person that doesn't have a discount code and doesn't bought have not bought two products it will look weird but the second part the product block it should show for all of the people so if you check look you see you have that 10 examples here so let's see what other person bought and how this dynamic content will change for them okay this person you see how we change the image it's changed the name change the price the quantity stayed the same because they bought one product but now you see the pro problem here is use discount code and there is nothing it just says to buy and then the two products that they bought but there is nothing where is discount code because this person didn't use a discount code and this person also bought two products but if we find someone that bought only one product we will see an empty space after and let me see if i can find something like that for this person it's okay Did you see the main part is still changing the product block is changing so that is the important thing that it the dynamic content is working exactly as we want it okay here is example with person who bought only one product they also don't have discount code so there is empty space there and they also bought one product so again that was not the best example but it was a good way to show you how to take the data depending on what you want to do again having two tabs open it's always a good idea because you can find a lot of information here you don't need to go back and forth you can put everything that you need into the email and then you can just preview it with different people to see if this works properly the second part of dynamic content as i said so one is contained into the metric itself the other part is contained into this Clio article called message personalization references and here you can use the content that is dynamic but it's not part of the metric itself this is part of the person's profile so this is these are things like email first name last name uh, organization address like everything that may be on the person profile these are the codes that you can use so just use just use the the these codes here so this is a tag instead of adding an unsubscribe message and then uh, linking it to the unsubscribe page you can just use this code it will automatically lead people to the unsubscribe page there are a lot of things here if statements you can find if statements you can add a web view in different ways you can add specific properties that people may have so if you have a lot of subscribers with similar properties that you want to show them like for example let's say someone bought a red shirt and you want to add a red shirt property to everyone who bought red shirt and you can for some reason if you want to say you bought red shirt last time or something like that here are also examples of how you can use those tags and how that would look so you can say hey first name default friend any interest some person look up, and then favorite food so for example if you have the information about favorite food for some people and you can add that information into the emails the default part of these variables are what to show in case people don't have this metric so if we have a subscriber that doesn't have first name with the default part we are saying if they don't have the name just say friend instead here we are saying if they don't have favorite food property if they haven't told us what is their favorite food just say tasty treats 
But if they do, it will show the food. So if someone said apple, then it will say hello friend, or to me it will say hello Bobby, any interest in some apples. So that is how to use these properties. Like you can use their email, you can say for if you want to point out this is you be this email, you subscribed, or if you want to address them by first name and last name, and those kind of things. So this article consists all of the properties that you can use as dynamic content in the emails and you can add any of those here and then when showing to people uh, when sending the emails to people each person will see different things because of their different properties in their profile so everyone has a different name so they will see their name they will see their properties if you want to use for some reason their address uh, you can add that part and everyone will see their own address how to find this thing it's simple google search just search on google and it will show up as first article and i think that would be it when it comes to dynamic content again taking consideration that different metrics have different dynamic content these were the ones for place order we have different information for checkout started we have different information if we have integrated some shipping up that shipping up will not have information much about the person or the product but it may have information about the shipping number the address where this would be delivered you can say uh, your product that you ordered uh, will be delivered on this address this is the shipping number this is the link where you can track your shipping and so on and so on all of this content is part of the metric and you can find it while you start editing the email in the preview section of the email and then you can use the different people that are there usually 10 people 10 recent people who trigger the event to see the different things that uh, you're adding as properties and, and to see if you properly add it sometimes you may have make a mistake and let's say for example let's do it here so by mistake we removed one letter then when we go to preview we will not see it properly you see how the price doesn't show so this tells us that there is some problem and the problem is that i removed the letter from the code so yeah that would be it about dynamic content hopefully this explains things if not feel free to ask questions and we'll try to answer as soon as possible thanks want to discover how much money your email marketing can actually bring you if that's the case let our team of email marketing experts show you how with our free email marketing audit we'll conduct a comprehensive analysis of your email marketing efforts provide you with action plan and show you how to effectively segment and convert your audience simply go to flowium.com slash audit and book your audit today in case you have any additional questions about this video please leave them under this video and to show the support please please click on the thumbs up and subscribe to our youtube channel see you next thursday bye